So, still, still very much, there's current scandals surrounding Boris Johnson, his wallpaper, his curtains, as well as who initially paid for his uh, Downing Street flat. Questions are still being asked and pressure should still be keep keep on being heaped on this Prime Minister. Because this is someone who you just look at, at Boris Johnson being pre-Prime Minister, being pre the Foreign Secretary, being pre an MP, being in the Mayor of City of London and his, and his actions during then, and even the time when he was a journalist. You know, this is not, and we should not be surprised at what went on. A lot of people were predicting that Johnson sooner or later would do something and keep on screwing up. And a lot of the Tory MPs are really, especially this week, especially this week, are going to be weighing up the pros and cons of keeping Boris versus getting rid of him. I guarantee you this has been the talk of Conservative MPs for at least not only last week, but going into this week as well. Because they are hoping that Boris, like normal, can somehow survive all these scandals. Because trust me, the list of Boris's scandals should have felled him years ago. And at least ruled him out from ever being able to become Prime Minister, being ever being able to be an MP, being ever being able to have been Mayor of London. So hopefully this time... Boris Johnson will be taken out. How he will be taken out, we don't know. Who knows what could happen uh, this week. So, we're going to cover some of Johnson's past because I think this does feed into the now. And I'm sure will surprise a lot of people who haven't followed Boris's history will be very shocked about some of the stuff that Boris has got up to and how the hell he is even allowed to even become Prime Minister, or even be considered to have been Prime Minister in the first place. So, uh, before we jump into that, please do remember to hit that like, share and subscribe button. And of course, down below there is a link to my Patreon page, as well as a one-off donation link called Buy Me Coffee, where you can, well, buy me a coffee. And thank you to all those people who do support me that way. So, this comes from The Guardian, and the title is Scandal Upon Scandal. The charge sheet that it should have felled Johnson years ago. Yes, it's a real scandal. Despite the apparent absurdity of the Westminster village obsessing over the soft furnishings and the precise class conditions of the John Lewis brand, there is a hard offence underneath all those cushions and throws. By refusing to tell us who first paid for the refurbishment of his Downing Street flat, Boris Johnson is denying us, his boss, the right to know who he owes and what they might hold over him. Offence is, is, right <coughs> offens is the right word, because even before the Electoral Commission determines whether the law on political funding was broken, Johnson's failure to come clean may well be in itself a breach of the ministerial code that bars not only actual conflicts of interest between ministers, public duties and their private interests, but even the, per the perception of such conflicts. In refusing to tell us who first paid the bill for the overpriced wallpaper, or to give full details of who paid for his December 2019 holiday in, uh, in, in, Must in Mustique, Johnson has uh, offended the public trust. So yes, this is a scandal. But do you know who else is a scandal? That, <laughs> that while Johnson was racking up an estimated £200,000 on home decor, his government was pushing through the post-Grenfell fire safety bill that threatens ordinary leaseholders with complete financial ruin, saddled and saddling them with the cost of ridding their homes of potentially lethal cladding and other hazard. One woman is facing a bill of £70,000 to make her one-bedroom flat in Bristol safe. That is also another scandal. 
or that by breaking his 2019 manifesto pledge and slashing the UK's aid budget, Johnson has cut our contribution to the UN's effort on HIV slashed AIDS, to the life-saving water projects used by 80%, and to the UN family planning program by even more, money that could have prevented ma uh, maternal and child deaths in the world's poorest countries. That too is a scandal. The coronavirus death toll of 127,000 people that remains the highest in Europe, alongside the deepest economic slump in the G7. The mistake that Johnson made three times over and over in 2020 by delaying lockdowns in March, September and the following winter. The seeding of COVID in nursing homes, the decision to keep borders open even during the height of lockdown. As smart as putting a double bolt and an extra chain on the front door while leaving the door swinging wide open. Johnson's absence from the first five COBRA meetings on COVID, preferring to flick through the swatches at his weekend home at Chequers, they're all scandals. The VIP lane for ministers and pals when the PPE contracts were being doled out. There were so many politicians chums were looking at COVID and saw the commercial opportunity. The 127 million contract that went to the P14 medical run by a Tory donor or the 160 million deal with Miles with Miller Designs also run by a Tory donor. Both received just uh, this week. And the staggering sum of the 37 billion committed at a test and trace program that never actually worked. Johnson's support for Dominic Cummings even has he torched most of the important public health policy in a century and installed the, the country's and ins insulted the country's intelligence with a tall story about an eye test on wheels. Every one a scandal. The failure to sack Robert Jerick even after he rushed through the unlawful planning decision that would save Richard Desmond, yet another Tory donor, £45 million in local taxes. The failure to sack Priti Patel, even after she had been found to have broken the ministerial code. The failure to sack Gavin Williamson, even after he presided over an exams fiasco that threatened to damage the life chances of tens of thousands of young people. The appointment of Gavin Williamson, not two months after he'd been fired by Theresa May for leaking sensitive information from the National Security Council. That, too, is a scandal. Johnson's Brexit protocol that put a border down the Irish Sea, even after he'd vowed never to put a border down the Irish Sea, thereby imperiling a union he swore blind that he would protect. His proposal of an internal market bill that would proudly... Uh, declared his intention to break international law, prompting the UK's top legal civil servant to quit, one of a disturbing number of mandarins driven to resignation on Johnson's watch. His illegal suspension of parliament, overturned as a, overturned as a violation of fundamental democratic practice by a unanimous verdict of, unanimous verdict of the Supreme Court. The lies that led to that moment the, hundred, the 350 million on the side of a bus or the scare story that Turkey was joining the EU and that Britain would be powerless to stop it. Sliding, uh, siding with Vladimir Putin to suggest that the EU had provoked Russian invasion of the UK, of the Ukraine. Scandals all. And I've forgotten he'd done that, by the way, as well. The blame he bears for wrongly saying when Foreign Secretary that Nazim Zalil Radcliffe had been, training, uh, had been training journalists in Iran, further condemning a woman who this week was sentenced to yet another year in prison in that country. His quip about clearing away the dead bodies in Saltir in Libya, a phrase that makes all too plausible the multiple sources that claim that he told the Downing Street meeting on COVID that he was happy to let the virus rip and let the bodies pile high rather than impose another lockdown. His record as mayor, the spaffing, the spaffing of Londoners' money up the wall on a failed vanity project that were either completely unused or just unworkable. 
yet somehow managing to boost the entrepreneurial entrepreneurial efforts of his lover, Jennifer Arcrui. Cozy in their very own VIP lane, with Johnson as the recipient of 126000 in public money. That, too, is a scandal. His racist musings of the half-Kenyan Barack Obama, the casting of Muslim women as bank robbers, letterboxes, and African as Africans as pickaninnies with watermelon smiles. His running of a spectator editorial that falsely accused drunken fans of causing the Hillsborough calamity and suggesting that the people of Liverpool wallow in, vi uh, in vicarious victimhood. His firings from the Tory front bench and the Times newspaper, lying both times. They're all scandals. So a system that makes the Prime Minister the ultimate arbiter of the very code that he, that, uh, that he has broken. So Johnson decides when and wherever to investigate himself, making him judge and jury in his own case. Not much better is the opposition party that walloped him in 2019, now struggles to lay a glove on him now. Or maybe the real scandal lies with us, the electorate, still seduced by the tonsilled hair rebel, uh, rebel stick and the fax bromine that should have paled all years ago. Americans got rid of their lying self-service plaguing, plague, plagued charlatan a hundred days ago, and they did it at the first possible opportunity. Next week, polls suggest we're poised to give ours a partial thumbs up at the ballot box for allowing this shameless man to keep riding high and the shame is on us. And that's, I think, a root of the problem. I think there, you go through all those things constantly, scandal after scandal. And the shocking thing is, I think it's two ways. First of all, not a lot of people care because some of these scandals are there, but they weren't blown up by the newspaper. I think the fact that the flat scandal, the comments that he's made about letting the bodies pile high are enough to get rid of him. Now, like I say, we're going to have to watch and see what happens, but we're going to have to hope, and I mean really hope, that... You know, Keir Starmer just takes off the gloves and actually starts taking on Johnson in bare knuckled fighting. And I hope Starmer does start to take that approach because he has a lot of ammunition to start firing at Boris Johnson and the rest of the Tory party. And there are ways, which we've discussed before, how he could absolutely take them to the cleaners if he wanted to. So, hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll have to see what happens this week, but you never know. A week is a long time in politics. And with that said, thank you very much for watching. Please do remember to hit that like, share and subscribe button. And of course, down below there is my Patreon page and a link to my one-off donation link called Buy Me a Coffee, where you can, well, buy me a coffee. And as always, thank you to all those people who do support me that way. And as always, we'll see you all next time.